The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. Let's take a look what we got going on. We are about 24 minutes from the open, 23 minutes and 14 seconds. We're going to be exact about it. The E-mini right now about 0.24%. Free market, SPY 0.24 as well. You know, we kind of had a just sideways, slightly down day. Excuse me, sideways, slightly up day yesterday. Uh, I don't expect that to be much different today. I think the market is really waiting on what Powell is going to say, or excuse me, what the inflation data is going to say. Uh, you know, I was talking with some people yesterday about it, and everyone's talking about being in an actual recessionary period, which we're obviously not, right, because you, you do still have inflation. I mean, PCE around 2.6, I think, um, and then CPI, obviously, you know, that's always going to be a little bit above that. But that target is really that 2% PCE. And, uh, you know, I still think there's time to see that target. I don't think what Powell has said suggests that we're going to get rate cuts before that 2 point, before that 2%, really, right? You create a massive issue, which I something I've been talking about a lot, which is you still have a lot of liquidity, or excuse me, you still have a lot of capital that exists, Right. And right now it's kind of locked up like in uh, what you could think of like as like ice caps. You know, this is in the money market funds, this is in CDs, different kind of savings and stuff like that. The minute you get any kind of movement lower in interest rates, I can foresee a lot of that money now entering the market again. I can see that spurring some form of buying again just in the general consumer market. And then you're right back to higher inflation you know this is something that I, th I think Powell is probably thinking of as well when he says we just need more data you know and I see these like cherry-picked headlines which are so nuts to me about Powell saying uh, rates higher rates for too long can can cause the opposite issue and it's like he says that but it's just him kind of tempering what he's saying the entire time right the takeaway from every Powell conversation for the past few months has been we just need to see more data, right? It, I don't know what their exact target of decrease is, like their rate of decrease for them to begin like, okay, we can cut maybe, you know, 25 basis points or something like that. Um, you know, let's say PCE comes in like year over year, or let's just say, you know, on a 12-month basis of, uh, you know, 2.3, right? Maybe that 0.3% drop is positive. And uh, we get an interest rate cut. That's, that's possible. But this market in the economy, to some certain extent, still somewhat strong. Yeah, you have jobless claims increasing, but you're, not, you're, you're seeing a contraction right, of new jobless claims. People are staying longer. We can talk about an article that goes through that a little bit as well. Um, so I think the data tomorrow will be pretty eye-opening. Uh, give me a second to even like, see what else we have coming up on it. Yes, you have inflation rate year over year at 8.30 a.m. You have initial jobless claims at 8.30 a.m. We do have wholesale today at 10 a.m. Uh, and then we have PPI month over month on Friday. So there's a lot of like really important data coming out. And that's all going to, how that fares is all going to uh, kind of determine what the Fed does. Again, I would also say what is, what is the market anticipating long term with these rates? Are we expecting to go back down to, you know, a near zero or even 1%? I, I, I'm not sure it needs that. Uh, anyways, it'll be interesting to see. Let's see where we're at right now and everything else. Obviously, it's just pre-markets, not a lot. We're kind of sideways right now before the open in the comp. And the Dow futures up 0.06%. Silver up 0.56% right now. Copper contract trading at 460 Crude oil at 81.45. Let's see what the dollar is doing. Uh, 105.06. Uh, 
kind of in the middle of that big trading range, right? In between the 106 to 104 area, that's to be anticipated as well as other countries are coming uh, lower with their interest rates. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about, <clears throat> you know, why don't we talk about some nuclear? Give me one second here. So this is something that I've been talking about a lot, right? Because I think it is no doubt the future, okay? Let me just pull up Kamiko Corp just to have something up on the screen here. Because I think this is, has the potential to be a winner long term. These guys are, you know, one of the largest miners of uranium. Uh, of course, the largest is uh, Kazaataprom. Uh, this is the Kazakhstan uh, kind of state uranium miner. There is no doubt in this realm of carbon credits and trying to get every business on to, I say every business, like large, you know, cap stocks, uh, onto being environmentally friendly, that nuclear is going to have to have a space in this. It's not a it's not a doubt, right? Microsoft is building these massive data centers. They're now in works with a company called Natrium, which is also the elemental name for sodium and other countries, uh, to build new sodium reactors, right? This is massive. It's all gonna be uranium at the end of the day though. And this is something important because I had an email actually from someone uh, who was listening Talking about uranium being the future, they're like, oh, what about thorium or all this kind of stuff? Thorium is still going to become uranium, right? I mean, you just shoot a bunch of particles, thorium, and it becomes uranium-233. Okay, and everything, in my opinion, long in the future, far, as far as these data centers are concerned, are going to be predominantly run on this. So you have Kamiko Corp. You have, and if you, you know, you're not totally set on this, I can pull up the uh, Senate hearings, right? So the Senate passed, this was even in, in the end of June, okay? They passed a critical clean energy bill. This paves the way for more nuclear. Right, the bill represents the significant actions Congress has taken to advance uh, nuclear building, clean energy since Democrats narrowly passed the Inflation Reduction Act almost two years ago. What's cool about this is it's, um, it's bipartisan. You know, I, I think there tends to be this kind of, you know, contrarian view from from one of the parties uh, regarding clean energy. The, the other party wants clean energy but doesn't like nuclear, and the other party says, well, hey, let's do nuclear, right? The, the problem that you run into with nuclear is it costs so much to build, okay? And this is what I hear all the time. And it's, it's an easy kind of argument against nuclear. But when you think about it, like, and this is like long, long term, right? This level of investment you have to initially put in is pretty high. But then you can run these things for, for decades, right? You do have to do maintenance. The stuff we have today is not like what happened in the 80s, uh, whether that's in Russia or things that happened in the U.S. These things are relatively smart, right? And if you get on something like what Microsoft is doing with natrium reactors, you can end up using plutonium as well, which can become waste and everything, usually. This is really big. You have Oklo. I'm not sure if Oklo is public. I'm just going to, yeah, you do. So this is uh, going to be nuclear as well. If this is the right company, I'm going to check this over the break. But this is Sam Altman's startup, and this is for nuclear as well. Let's talk a little bit about some potential companies uh, to look in if you want to add this you know, to your portfolio. It's interesting kind of stuff. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the Morning market kickoff. We actually have a caller on the line. This is Jose from Lakeland with a question about inflation. Interested to hear what it is. Jose, how are you doing this morning? I am well. How are you? Good. Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Just another muggy morning in Florida. Oh, it's muggy out. Uh, <laughs> you got to have a change of clothing with you at all times. This is horrible. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> hey, yep. Yeah, hey, I have a contrarian view on sure. inflation. Oh, don't um, um, it is that why does this – I actually look at inflation as a positive thing because you have a nation of obese people in this country, just plain obese. Uh, we are a nation of consumers. You know, the only president who told us the truth, who's considered the worst – of all presidents, is President Jimmy Carter. He interrupted the Sunday night movie back in the 70s, 74. Uh, James Kahn, the Sunday night movie of the week, The Gambler, and said, I have a bad message for Americans. We've become a nation of consumers. It's no longer what you do. It's how much you own. I look at inflation, contrarian view is it's a positive thing. Stop consuming. 
Stop buying the extra things that you don't need. Yeah, that, I mean, that's you it. follow me? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a very, I mean, that's almost existential in a sense, right? I mean, kind of interesting to think about. You, you run into an issue for that's sure. True. I didn't know about that about Jimmy Carter, of course. I, that's interesting for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you can make a lot of criticisms of what consumer-based economies kind of end up with, you know? Um, that's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Big you know, time. it is interesting because you can YouTube it yourself in your spare time. He came on and said, "I, you know, it was probably a big deal that he's interrupting the Sunday night movie of the week. Absolutely. Which everybody back in the 70s, you actually had families spending time together and watching a movie. But he interrupted and said, I have bad news for this country. He's the only one that told you the truth. Uh, uh, the rest of them are going to lie through their teeth to you. Um and, and he was 100% correct. Uh, you know, we become a nation of consumers. Why don't we stop it and think a little more, ex, um, the word you used, um, sure. um, and, and look at it as a positive. Stop spending, stop consuming. Um, you, you know, there's anyway. this theory, like I, I had learned this when I was in college, and it was something that kind of struck me, right, that with the money multiplier. There's a lot of different ways you can look at something that can be called the money multiplier, even like in fractional reserve or anything. But one of the things that we spoke about was how this economy makes essentially more money, right? And it's this idea that, you know, $1, I'm using, I'm going to, I pulled up Albany EDU just to give kind of a nice little concise definition on this, but it's a $1 increase in the monetary base can cause the money supply to increase by more than $1. And this can be done through a lot of different things like fractional, like lending, but also the idea, right, um, of just increase in general value of you're just selling things for a higher price, right, than what you make them for. So you get to this really addictive kind of thing within the economy where you just want more people and more people to consume because you drive value higher, higher, and higher. And, you know, what does, yeah. you know what does that do? Again, this is what I say when this is more like almost existential in a sense, right? Because for mm -hmm. the economy, you want everyone to keep buying, you know? You have to bring in more people. You have to have, you know, X, Y, and Z to increase the population because you want more and more people buying because value gets goes up and up and up in some capacity, right? This is at least a thought. I'm sure there's some diminishing return somewhere, right? But the idea is, like, is that good for the human organism to just be designed or, or inspired in a way just to acquire more things and it's a very that's interesting right. comment you and, know and, sh and, and, and shouldn't we be pointing the finger at the fed because doesn't this house of cards collapse where if the fed sees that the the gdp is declining because people are pulling back oh i know they want people to pull back now they're hoping for high unemployment uh they're hoping for uh less money in the system yeah. uh that's their own problem that they they're the author of their own problem because they listened to donald trump in 2018 Tell the American people, hey, lower rates more. They're at two and a half. We want them at zero. There is no inflation in the system. Tom Sr. said there was inflation in 2018. Yeah, no, uh, without a doubt. You know, there's. I think the low interest rates that we had for so long were, were absolutely a problem, right, that didn't get resolved until we started seeing this hyper, hyper inflation. You know, one of the things, like, on that note, I've, I've kind of criticized the only way really the Fed can deal with this, which is the demand side restriction, right? You're lowering that, you're making that C smaller in the GDP equation. And uh, it's sad because, you know, we're not talking about just numbers here. These are, you know, people, right? They're losing their jobs, you know, in this, and they're not the ones I would say or would argue have the most capital flow that, that, are, that are adding to inflation, right? It's a very, it, it is a weird thing across the board, you know? Yes. Now, just to change topics, um, Tom Sr. thinks that we're going to get a 10% correction in the housing market. How does that happen if unemployment is as low or employment is as low as it is unemployment? I, I don't yeah. see uh, – builders are walking away from projects right now. It, just look at the, the July futures in lumber. Uh, it's never been at 440 per 1,000. Uh, that, that's a sign of a recession around the corner. That's a clear sign. So, Lumber is screaming recession yeah. around the corner. I don't see, uh, but I don't see any inventory coming in unless builders are building. And they've stopped. 
And um, and until until employment climbs and stays high for a year or two, I don't see any um, a, a significant home decline prices. The only thing I can't speak for what Tom was thinking of when he said that, but one of the things I could see right is you have this really you have this this headlock between the uh, the sellers and the buyers, right? The sellers don't want to sell at a lower cost than what they bought for, right? But obviously, high interest rates are trying to push down costs a little bit. The buyers, obviously, are not going to buy at an inflated rate because rates are so high. You could run into a point where if this rate structure stays stagnant for so long that the sellers are like, hey, I, I need to sell because I need some money. This might be too expensive for me right now. And you end up seeing a decrease in housing costs. 10%, I don't know, but that is one way I could see a contraction in the price of homes without adding more builds, I guess. But I would, Tom's gonna be on today if you wanna give him a call and ask him a little bit more on that. Okay, so. good point, good point. Okay, sounds good, thank Jose, you. Jose, thank you so much for calling in. It was great to hear from you, man. Thank you. Take care. Folks, we'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the morning Market kickoff, we are at the open right now. Let's take a look what we got going on. Uh, we have that E-mini up about 0.24%, SPY roughly the same, Russell Futures up about 
Uh, the NQs trading at 0.39% with the composite up 0.44. Uh, Dow futures uh, just sideways to the upside, and then the Dow Jones sideways to the downside, kind of flat right now, really. Gold contract about 0.77%. Now, if you missed that conversation that I had with Tim Ord yesterday, uh, he goes over all this kind of stuff, even Basil Chapman. Go on to our YouTube channel at Tiger Financial News Network. Look for those under the videos tab. Give us a like and a subscribe while you're at it. It helps us out immensely. Let's take a look. Silver trading at 31.22, up 0.54% in that copper contract. Ooh, wanted to move up a little bit. I love this metal, but I wish it got more love because I think it has the potential. 0.79%, but, you know, the, the charts don't lie. Crude oil up... Uh, we're actually kind of down sideways right now, 0.23%, 81.21. And then the dollar still trading in the middle of that larger trading range between 106 and 104, trading right smack at 105.05. Uh, lucid off a little bit. Now, this was a... <laughs> they had a... What, what got wrong with them? I think Fisker and Lucid, they had safety issue recall. Right after Lucid beat earnings, too, and it's like, ah, uh, nothing can go right for this company, Right. Trading at $7 billion <clears throat> market cap right now. Trading at 310. Uh, let's see here. Lucid's, uh, Lucid's recalling 2022 and 2023 model Lucid Air vehicles over a safety mechanism that's susceptible to intermittent hardware connection faults. That's horrible. Which has caused the vehicle to lose power while driving in at least 10 instances. According to a report, right? You know, so I had a, uh, it's kind of funny. I had a VW a few years ago. I drive a Mazda now and I love that car. And, I would recommend checking it out if you're in the market. But um, anyways, what, what had happened, and this happens with a lot of VWs and even Audis. Uh, it was a Jetta, and so a lot of the Audis are like similar to the Jetta. But that part in the, uh, the engine that has the airflow intake, the, the rubber neck around it was starting to perforate. And so it getting too much air in, and the car would just die on me randomly, which was like honestly terrifying when you're like cooking 55, and your car just starts janking and slowing down. And I remember I was trading it in um, <laughs> for, the, for the Mazda. And I was like, yeah, this thing is like good, blah, blah, blah. And as I'm pulling in, getting right to my spot, it lurches forward and the thing just totally dies. And, uh, but that's all right, because I already sold it to them and I got the, uh, the Mazda. I'm kidding. Obviously, they just wanted to scrap it. They weren't going to resell the car, but just kind of funny stuff with that. Uh, Let's see here. Fisker's recall involves an issue. Fisker's going to be out of business. If I think they already are. Uh, Lucid said more than 5,200 vehicles could potentially be wrapped up in its recall, while Fisker is pegging its number at 7,500 vehicles. Lucid doesn't seem to be getting hit too hard on it. And what I liked about what was going on with Lucid and even Tesla, right? And even to some of the people saying, you know, the EV business is, go is gone, I, I don't think it is, right? I don't think that the... American government nor the European government believe that it's gone either. And I think I can defend this by saying uh, or, or by mentioning the tariffs that have been released uh, against China, right? And them flooding that. China has a huge amount of EV vehicles. And Europe and America want to protect their makers, right? Move on with Lucid. They beat on their earnings. Tesla beat on their earnings. You have Rivian earnings coming up. I think Rivian is going to beat on it. Now, we could talk a little bit about this. Okay, woo, look at that. Moving up a little bit on some contracting volume. 1611 right now, up 2.58% today at the open. Uh, that is pretty solid for that company. So it's weird, right? You're trading at like nearly a $16 billion market cap. My major concern with Rivian, well, my major concern initially with Rivian was going to be uh, that it was going to run out of cash. Right. And these kind of like startup companies just bleed through cash. And that is a really bad thing to do when you have a expensive capital environment. Right. They got that massive cash infusion from VW. It's going to be a billion to begin with. Um, this is going to keep them afloat for a while until they can get that R2 platform out. They need that R2 platform to work. And if it doesn't work, then Rivian is in a major world of hurt. Right. You had the CEO come out and say probably Q2 earnings were going to be a little bit rough because they had to shut down a certain plant to add more capabilities to it. That's going to be fine. It's going to matter more what the Ford guidance is, right? And the Ford, the unofficial Ford guidance, and this is coming from the CEO, is that they will finally be profitable in Q4, right? The amount of robots they've added, they have put through like 
35% uh, cost efficiency, excuse me, uh, decrease in material costs um, on their vans, which they're selling out to Amazon. What's even better as well is they don't have to just sell to Amazon. They can sell to any company that wants to buy uh, those Rivian vans. Uh, of course, they they really blew it. I believe it was with Ford where they couldn't meet demand or what Ford was requiring. And so they lost them as a uh, as a client, which is sad. But maybe you can get a bounce back with it, right? <clears throat> Rivian's is interesting. Now, long term, with that cash injection uh, from VW, you might run into an issue, Right. Number one, this is a joint venture. What, what, what is it for, right? It's about building basically the software for these cars, okay? And it's a joint venture, which I think long-term kind of hurts Rivian, right? If you could, if Rivian were just getting this money to develop it and they could, you know, say rent it out to VW, that would be phenomenal for Rivian, right? The long-term is they're not going to be competitive, I'm concerned about, right? In the sense that there's no way they can produce the output that VW does, anywhere close. Can VW deliver a car that is moderately the same as Rivian regarding like comfort, style, all that kind of stuff? I believe they probably could. And if they have Rivian's, you know, software in it, you know, one on the short term, that's great because they believe in Rivian as creating good software. But I think in the long term, they, they outcompete, right? <clears throat> it's a really interesting problem to run into, and I'm not sure exactly how uh, to, to really think about it, I think, on the long term. In the short term, though, I think Rivian's doing okay. If they can really meet that Q4 profitability group, and, and they've really, they've been losing less and less money. Yeah, right. I mean, it's not great, but they lose less and less money every quarter on the production of their cars, which is very solid. If they can become profitable in Q4 and get those R2s out at the price point they're talking about, I think Rivian's a player um, you know, in the short term, I think it'll probably go up uh, up until those earnings report. So that should be kind of interesting to see what goes on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's neat. I like the car too, and everyone does it. Now, I'm going to shift over a little bit uh, to some news, which is nuts to me because I thought we learned this, what happened with Wells Fargo, but I guess we didn't. <clears throat> it's from the Wall Street Journal. This is the fifth third bank fined by Consumer Watchdog for auto insurance and sales practices. Let's take a look. Fifth third bank was uh, ordered to pay $20 million in fines by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which said the bank forced auto insurance onto customers who were already covered oh, and opened fake accounts in the customers' names. Come on, man. CFPB ordered Cincinnati-based bank to pay $5 million for what it describes more than 37000 illegal car insurance charges, which the agency said resulted in nearly 1,000 families having their vehicles repossessed. The agency also filed a court order requiring the bank to pay $15 million penalty for the use of, quote, cross-selling strategies to sell additional products to existing customers. Man, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at DFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
He has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. This is the Morning Market Kickoff. I want you to take a look over here at this screen right now. We're on the front page of TFNN. Dot com. If you want to take a look down here, we do have our July Tiger Dollar Sale running right now. We have all bonuses doubled, and that ends July 22nd. Go ahead and click it over. You can get a 20, 30, or even 40% bonus on all your Tiger Dollars. These are applied to all your purchases, and they never expire and can be transferred. And it is no better time when you pick up a Tiger Dollar to come check out one of our great newsletters or services that we have. And I want to put one in the spotlight right now. This is the Tiger Forex Report by Teddy Kekstat. Now, if you want to get into Forex or anything the commodities are doing, this is going to be the thing for you. You've got to check it out. Go ahead and hit subscribe, and you wait for that whole thing to load. It is $97, which is a steal. Now, if uh, it's your first time and you just want to check it out, you should, because we have a 30-day money-back guarantee um, on all of our newsletters. If it's your first time subscribing, we take a look here as well. We also have two, um, again, phenomenally priced Webinars from Teddy. This is capitalized on time with calendar stock option spreads and then Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. You've got to check it out again. Get yourself some Tiger Dollars. Get yourself a webinar and the newsletter. Teddy Kekstat, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a nice, cool day in Chicago. Oh, I'm so happy, Teddy. I'm so happy for you. It is, uh, what do we have right now? I think something like 90 degrees and muggy. I'm going to have to get up to Chicago sometime soon yeah, here. Yeah, we're, we're, we're 69. We had rain oh. last night. It's going to be like a high of 75 today. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying that because it's fantastic. Oh, for sure. So what are we looking at today? I'm curious to see what you're looking at with this market. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, crude, I think, is the uh, market that's on the move. We uh, touched the uh, upper end of our uh, critical resistance band last Friday. And uh, in the Tiger Forex report, we were calling for a profit-taking slide. We made lower move lows over the past few days on an intraday basis. Today, I think we're, right now we're settling in the middle of the range. And I think you're probably going to see a lot of choppiness the rest of the day as far as it's concerned you know we don't have anything coming out until thursday's cpi number and uh it's very reflective in many of the currencies i mean we can talk about some currencies that are making some moves yeah. um but big ones like the euro um i mean right now today the it's got i think it doesn't even have a 20 pip range so i mean we're at eight almost nine o'clock Chicago time in the morning. And if you have a range that's, that's tight, all I can say is if you're trading the Euro US dollar today, you should be staying away. Definitely not trying to get into anything. That's for sure. Managing yep. a position perhaps. Yeah, fantastic. And I would love to hear your insight on some of the currency pairings. And then also uh, if you have any insight or maybe perspective of numbers that come out on Thursday and kind of how the Fed will respond mm -hmm. to that. 
Okay. okay. Well, first of all, I think that that's a good lead up as the number. Uh, the yeah. CPI number on Thursday comes out 730 Chicago time. And remember, we also have the CPI that's coming out for uh, Germany, not for the EU, but for Germany. Okay. So in that case, that could actually have a big bearing on the uh, the euro US dollar. Um, it's, you know, they're the the, the German economy is definitely something that is going to be driving most of the uh, economic action and what they're going to do as far as with the ECB and stuff like that. Right. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any retraction in the CPI there. I, I don't I think there's probably not going to be much of a move there. Um, I think the biggest watch we have to see is what happens with us, you know, because going into this trade, if we stay, I mean, yesterday was not much wider of a range than we already have today. I mean, could we break out to the upside or downside today? Yeah, but I think it's going to be really tough. We're floating right below our monthly directional pivot level. And unless there's any reason to think that yields are going to pull back very strongly, which could give a boost to the euro US dollar, I think you're going to stay in this range trade and watch for the CPI number, which gets back to something I've been talking about with you and Tommy now for over a year and a half that yep. the, the biggest days of the month now are your economic numbers. You know, you got unemployment once a month, you got CPI, you got PPI, PM, you know, like those numbers, it's very reflectionary of how it used to be, say like back in the early 90s and stuff like that and late 80s. You know, like these numbers are very big when it comes to what's gonna happen with the interest rate market. Now I'm not talking about what the Fed's gonna do, I'm talking about what the, how the market is going to react to these things, okay? Sure. So if CPI comes out, um, higher or unexpectedly higher than it should be, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have an issue with that. So as far as the actual number, and I can, I can actually give this to you to look out for, for the, you know, cause even if you're trading equities, this is actually a big deal for the CPI. Totally. So you have C CPI coming out on Thursday that, you know, the prior was 3.4%. And you're looking at it, the forecast staying basically the same. So if we see an uptick to 3.5, that's not necessarily going to cause a big gyration in the market. But if you see us up at like 3.7, 3.8, you know, something like that, that's going to most likely – cause a uh, big sell-off in the uh, 30 year and the 10 year because that's inflationary and it also means that the market at least in the short run doesn't care what the fed's going to do it sees inflation it's going to it's going to dictate higher rates you know so um that could cause the euro us dollar then in that case to start to break out to the downside okay um which is then we may get some action. So I think on an intraday trade, if you're looking to, to like when to get some action, I would look for the number on Thursday to come out at 730 and then jump in sometime around like 8 to 830 after maybe when the s and is open and the equities markets open, you know, because give them a good 15 to 20 minutes to digest the equity opening and options opening. And then I think you'll see um, before the European close a good move for, for at least the American trade for the euro US dollar especially. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, say the economic data comes out, let's say, good for Germany and then therefore, like, you know, the European bank and Canada, mm -hmm. they start really lowering these rates. But we have to keep ours a little bit higher. What how what, what could you play around that? Right. Because the dollar will stay much stronger relative to mm -hmm. that. Right. So. Right. Right. So what would you look for to, like, set up something in there or uh, anything along those lines? You mean like to change the outlook? You mean as far as like, uh, you know, I mean, I, if if CPI came out drastically lower, you know, um, that yep. would be a situation where you would see probably a big bond rally and a 10 year rally. Um, the market would be pushing for that. That would make the Fed really happy. Um, right now, I'm, I could care less what Powell has to say. It, right. It's all it's all indicative of the economic numbers. You know, I like I mean, it, he, right now he's just filling time and speeches that he has to make. There's nothing new. There's nothing that's going to radically change any any outlook by them you know it's, it really is the numbers and we're coming into this buffer zone you know we're right in front of the election right if if they don't see an easing in cpi i mean so what oil is down a few bucks from its high from last week it's still pretty high yeah you know i mean gas is still four dollars a gallon you know i mean like <laughs> yeah. anyway you might want to look at it that's the case so you know i mean and i think that there was uh an interesting comment i heard you talking about consumerism earlier yep. and by default you know um unless you're getting free money 
you know, which some people are in this country, that's actually fueling a lot of where, where our numbers are coming from. The average American isn't the one spending the money because we're right. strapped. They're, they're, they're the ones making the choices. They're not getting <laughs> yes. the free cell phones. They're not getting the free health insurance. They're not getting a free <laughs> stay in a hotel, you know, with room service. You know, I mean, this is a fact. You know, yeah. we have people costing thousands of dollars a day, you know, that are, and there's millions of them now in our country. That's fueling these numbers. So they're artificial. The reality is when, when, how long can that last? You know, I mean, and when that really starts to seize up, I think you're going to see a market, you know, correction, which is overdue. We need to see it because it's artificially inflated. Yeah. Interesting point and just great commentary in general. Teddy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Folks, stay right there. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. I was just joined by Teddy Kex out of the Tiger Forest Support. Uh, strongly recommend Checking that newsletter out if you haven't yet. Again, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee on the first month for a reason you don't uh, mess with the newsletter or it just doesn't work for you at that time. And while you're looking at that and checking it out, go ahead again and really reap the benefits here of this Tiger Dollar July double bonus sale. Okay, you can get up to a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollars. Fantastic deal. Uh, looking at NVIDIA right now, up about 1.7%. Obviously, there is a strong, strong demand. They've been downgraded uh, a few days ago. And uh, still more bullish car calls for Blackwell demand. This is going to be crazy. KeyBank lifted its price target 
to 180 from 130, which is nuts, considering. Representing more than a 40% upside for the stock. Uh, will Blackwell be needed? I, I think so. I think we're still at a time where people are spending money on these chips. We're going to get to a point then when we're spending money on the utilization of these chips and the AI, because I'm not sure how AI is really being used on a broad scale uh, for anything that's productive now. And you have Palantir, which is able you know, to kind of use this computing power and, and create actual results. Um, but you do have, it's not a bubble. I, I, I don't believe it's a, a, the whole thing is a bubble, but you do have these issues with companies coming in and being like, hey, we use AI to do this and X, Y, and Z, and they don't. Uh, or it's just, you know, just because you sit there and play with chat GBT doesn't really mean you're utilizing AI. And that's language that happens like in bubbles, right? But I think this is a little bit different. I think this is without a doubt the future. And you have some of the most valuable companies before this run up, and that's important to know, who are mobilizing right now uh, in order to build these data servers, to buy these kind of chips, and uh, actually create new power sources in the form of nucle small nuclear reactors in order to kind of power uh, their data centers. This is, uh, that's anything but a bubble in a major way. Is it, does something like NVIDIA stay this price forever at this market cap? That's kind of hard to say, right? You could get a deceleration of, of purchasing of these ships in the future. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. We have Basil Chapman up next, and we're we'll followed by Steve Rhodes, uh, Larry Pesavento at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and then Tom O'Brien at 3. Take care.